Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back to the 6C33C build, and you can see I went ahead and fabricated up both the chassis. So, let me kind of go over on this bare one how we did this. We've got, hopefully you can see this, we've got this big hole here, which is where the tube socket's going to go, and the wires for the output tube are going to come through. It also gives a huge, like, vent area for air to come up from underneath and there'll be some holes driven on the underside of the chassis you know on the underside here in the bottom plate so the air can come up and around the tube socket to help cool it off because heard that's an issue with these tubes this will be the driver tube the cathode resistor is going to go across here i know a couple of you folks were like don't put it on the top too bad we're we'll putting it on the top then we have the upper transformer is going to sit over here. We're going to have the speaker jacks come out of the side right next to the upper transformer. Then we have our plate choke, the 200 Henry guy. It's going to sit up here. Power transformers in the back. And we got our IC connector done. So, yeah, we're rolling right along. And this one will give you more of an idea of what it's going to look like because this is with the iron on installed. And sorry, Ed Core, nobody likes your blue transformer. So we painted them with some satin black to match these Hammonds. I know on some of my other builds lately, I've been doing some like hammer finish, hammer tone finish paint. And I just didn't feel like taking all these apart and dealing with that and scuffing them off and everything. So we just went with the plain black finish. And here's where the power resistor is going to sit right in front of the choke kind of over here away from the tube because the heat from this thing is going to, you know, roll up here behind the driver tube. I think I'm going to go with the silver trim ring on this. I've got some aluminum spacers ordered for the tube socket. And it's not going to sit up real high, but it's going to sit up about like that. Just, just enough for the leads to clear. And then have aluminum spacers between here and there to kind of match that trim and yeah that's what it's going to look like and then in the back let me rotate this around so you can see this and then i decided in the back here we're going to be putting like this big choke it's going to sit sideways bolted to the back down low so then on the power supply i decided to go with a capacitor input with a capacitor choke capacitor resistor capacitor we're gonna have a hundred uf then the choke then a 220 uf then a 50 ohm resistor then another 220 uf cap and that will excuse the pun cap off our power supply like i said we're going to put this down kind of low it's one of the reasons i got this thicker chassis and then above it we're going to put the 50 ohm power resistor and in this case Given the milliamps that this thing pulls, it's going to be a little over 2 watts of current. And so I didn't feel that a 5 watt was enough. So I ordered a 10 watt and a 25 watt. And I'll make that decision when they get here and see what size they are. I'm going to probably go the 25 watt just to go with overkill. And then we're going to put one of our little vent screens kind of over here in this corner kind of equidistant from everything to let that resistor that's on the underside that's got the super high voltage on it vent out through here then let me rotate this back around on this resistor i'm going to make this end ground and then this end's going to have the approximately 60 volts dc of the cathode voltage on it you know more towards the interior of the amp less likely that somebody's going to touch it and going to shock themselves and these things are going to sit like this and then this one will sit next to it like this with the high powered output tubes the high temperature on the outboards and then have the input tubes together and have these resistors together and so even less likelihood that somebody's going to stick their finger in there and shock themselves if i wanted to i could 
paint over them with some of that liquid electrical tape and that would insulate it but i want to leave them bare for me so that i can use these two points to check the cathode voltage to make sure that the tube bias is stable and i'm thinking about putting a digital voltmeter on the front of each of the amps i know some of you folks are going to go oh don't put a digital meter on it well the only analog meters I could find were huge and I think just would look goofy and they also require a lot of depth which I don't have room because this is getting pretty cramped and the little digital ones I just got to see what they look like I may or may not use those but it would be nice to be able to look over once in a while and just make sure the voltage is sitting around 60 and it's not yeah we know something's going on the other thing that I think I mentioned in an earlier video too was since I'm using one triode I'm going to use the outboard triodes in both the tubes and I'm going to situate them so that the triodes are sitting on the outboard the ones we're using to keep the heat away from the rest of the amp and then as the tubes age we can pop one out put it in this channel pop this one out put it in this channel and use the other triode in the you know tube so that we can get all the goodie that they've got out of them and the other thing too i'm going to show you some pictures here do not try to use these china bright white porcelain tube sockets they are garbage and i can understand why people have problems if they try to build amps using these cheap china tube sockets the little clamp things here are really cheesy and they're not centered well and they're not even like this big one's not even shaped right where it really grasps the whole tube pin and a lot of the heat that this thing dissipates from what i've heard comes through these tube pins and these two you know little grippers and so you want to make sure they get a good solid connection these are junk and I'll show you here in a close-up. This is what the Soviet one looks like. And supposedly the Soviet ones are also silver-plated. And then here's how the China one, see how the tube pin can go off to the side? It isn't even gripped between the two little prongs. And it just... Yeah, it just doesn't work good, guys. Don't waste your time trying to use those. Somebody shipped me a pair of these with these tubes. It was actually a viewer who said, hey, I've got some extra of these tubes and some tube sockets. I was going to build an amp. Never got around to it. Do you want them to play with? And I'm like, sure. That was about a year ago. And that's when I started kind of collecting parts for this thing. And like we did the poll on the channel, you guys said, this is the next amp you want to see, so here we are building it. So anyway, these are the good Soviet tube sockets. You can tell they're kind of an ivory color instead of being like that bright white. And when you look at the underside, these are much higher quality. And I bent these little legs over. You may not be able to see. I can show this in detail in another build video. Bent these over to get them out of you know, prying fingers so that somebody can't just come up and poke their finger in there. And if we just barely have those clearing the top plate, then there's not enough of a gap here for you to stick your finger in and get electrocuted. So it's as safe as something like this is going to be. Again, I've got no personal experience, but a lot of people have built amps with these tubes, and they all say that these tube sockets get super hot and to like elevate them over the chassis and some people said they use teflon spacers i couldn't find or at least easily find some teflon spacers that i trusted with the heat and so that's why i went with aluminum ones so anyway those are supposed to be here tomorrow as well as the power supply 50 ohm resistors and i'll make the call on how i'm going to mount those and like this one's going to bolt down and I'm going to put some, you know, really nice like computer CPU heatsink compound between this and the chassis so that, you know, it can dissipate the heat across the chassis as well as being in the free air here to cool itself off so it doesn't melt. And this is a 
50 watt resistor too so it's got plenty of reserve and then i think you know i don't know whether i'm going to put the the voltage little thing on the front or whether i'm just going to leave them kind of blank and maybe just put the little skooky badges on the front of them and call it a day i'm not sure where i'm going to put the rca jacks yet may just stick them in the top here like i did on my kt120 model blocks and then you know if other people you know i could put them in the side here that might make a little more sense so that they're like you know rca jack and then speaker terminals on the sides i'll figure that out when i get to that part of the build but yeah we're rolling right along here and so yeah that's pretty much what i have to show you today and i know some of you may have wanted to watch be fabricating these things i've done a bunch of fabrication videos and it's really tedious to try to keep that work on camera because i'm moving the chassis all around and put wood blocks and holding things and drilling and you know i'd rather just rock and roll and get this part of it done and then i will show you wiring up the second one the first one is kind of my experimental one to figure out how i'm going to lay everything out and then once i've kind of got the neat layout done on the first one and maybe learn from a few mistakes we'll work on the second one and another question i've gotten quite a few times is why don't you breadboard stuff and i don't know i just i just like building stuff and i mean to me knowing that i'm gonna just build it it makes me spend more time on the research and the schematic and designing and trying to make sure that I'm doing all of that right. I feel like that, at least for me, if I was, you know, breadboarding or it was easy to just move things all around, that I'd probably get lazy or sloppy and just kind of like, well, let's just kind of start hooking things up and see what happens. And I don't want to work like that. And so I am pretty sure that this schematic, I'm showing you here what we're going to be using is what we're going to go with. And I think it's going to work great. It's, you know, Triode Rob built one like this, said it sounded really good. And I know he went through several iterations of this whole thing to get where he did. And so there's no point in reinventing the wheel. Let's take something that somebody else has done the work on, give them credit for getting us to this point, and... We are doing things a little different. I'm not using toroidal transformers. And again, that's just a personal thing. I'm not a, I'm just not a fan of toroidal transformers. And people can say, well, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't make any sense. It's like it doesn't have to because I'm building the amp for myself, not for anybody else. And if you guys want to use, you know, toroidal transformers, then you use toroidal transformers. I mean, I will say I've seen some forum posts and, I may even try to link one below with people with toroidal transformers having them intermittently blowing fuses and it has something to do with if you just happen to hit the power switch and it's at the right place in the AC curve, the toroidal transformer is seen like a short or something weird. I don't, honestly, I don't really understand what's going on, and there, but people are saying there's real no way around it. And except for super oversizing the transformers or adding a bunch of really complex circuitry to try to keep that from happening. And then I'm like, well, why not just use an EI core transformer? So that's what all my bills are going to have. So anyway, I think this layout turned out really nice. I think that this is going to, it makes sense. I think it's going to look good when it's done. And probably about as small as you can build one of these amps in monoblocks like this and not have some serious cooling issues. Obviously, if you guys are wanting to kind of clone what I'm doing here, you could use larger chassis if your rack or whatever you have your stereo gear on or table has more space and spread this stuff out more. It's not going to hurt anything. But I think the way these are, you know, these are like offset like this. So they're not going to pick up the 
noise from the power transformer and then we got this plate choke turned 90 degrees and then the driver tube is far enough away from it i don't think we're going to have any issues so hey we'll find out and that's the other thing about breadboarding is if you build something on the table it may be better and it might be worse than the build and i would rather find out building the amp and then trying to figure out how to resolve the problems on the built amp rather than chasing something on a breadboard or then assuming oh well it's noisy on the breadboard but once i get it on the you know on the chassis it'll be fine and then it's not yeah that's just i've never worked like that and i don't see any reason to change so anyway hope you're enjoying this series gonna hopefully get these parts in tomorrow maybe over the weekend try to get some of the least power supply up and running we are going with a solid state power supply so that'll simplify things and i could kind of show you how i you know trim down the leads that we are using out of the power transformer we only are pulling out of the transformer the ones we're using and we're not using like the you know five volt heaters we're not using the 50 volt bias tap in you know there's a there's a bunch of wires that we're not using and so it simplifies you know the wiring inside the amp if you don't have all that stuff pulled through and then you've you know heat shrinking it off inside the amp it just makes it more cluttered so anyway again hope you all enjoy the series if you are please subscribe to the channel we're over 13k subs now like 15k would be a nice round number to hit and the channel does seem to be growing so thanks to all you new viewers and we got some other really cool product reviews coming soon so stay tuned for those and thanks again to you patreon supporters and also you folks that make donations at my website super appreciate it helps me afford to be able to throw stuff like this together and who knows when i'm done with these i'm probably going to sell these to my store so stay tuned for that too so until the next video have a nice day.